Hey guys, welcome to Upfront Games and happy Easter. I was debating on doing a video today at all because I got really busy with the website and a whole bunch of other things I'm working on. However, I felt that would be a disservice because I do have the time to do it. So here we are. Um, let's get started. So PlayStation's uh, trailer for the week is Freak Out Calamity TV Show. Check this out. <laughs> So that was Freak Out Calamity TV show, a little arcade shooter um, from, uh, or for Sony I should say, this week. That comes out on the 17th. So let's get into PlayStation's news. So the DualSense controller for the PlayStation 5 was revealed and it seems like a lot of the people have a love-hate relationship with it. Um, developers love the design, but gamers have been collectively on the fence. Um, I personally like it with the improvements. Uh, I, I think it's kind of not hard to when you consider what's all in this controller. The controller's haptic feedback sounds amazing. The create button just sounds like the share button, only it might have some extensions within the PS5, i.e. you hit the create button, you can actually edit. Uh, videos a little bit more um, straight uploads uh, as you can now um, but to maybe some other platforms and uh, so that's that's an intriguing feature to say the least because I don't know exactly what they're going to do with it yet the light bar has been relocated to either side of the touchpad and the adaptive triggers will be game changing if developers use their functionality a lot of gamers had negativity towards the built in microphone but it is stated directly from Sony that it's ideal for quick conversations, not long-term gaming. You're still going to want a headset and a mic to do any long-term gaming on the console so you don't have any random feedback or issues with the controller mic itself. Now, when it comes down to it, the combination of colors and design could be great, and I definitely enjoy the USB-C charging port. I think Sony did a great job with the controller personally, and I can't wait to get my hands on it this holiday. Again, it does look great. Some of the um, fan artwork that's been done, like taking the, the Spider-Man edition and applying it to the controller design, it just it looks great. And you got to keep in mind, Sony did research to make this controller the way it is with several gamers, etc., over about a three year period, if I remember correctly. So there's a lot of this apprehension towards the controller itself, but Sony definitely did the legwork to make sure that this is something that is fitting for most gamers. So that being said, moving on, Modern Warfare Season 3 is live, and the update includes two free weapons in Battle Pass, the Renetti Handgun and the SKS Marksman at levels 15 and 31, respectfully. Quads in Warzone and more modes join in season, uh, or in the season, sorry. Three 6 versus 6 multiplayer maps, including Telsic back Backlot, Hovik Sawmill, which is a rural battlefield, and Anaya Incursion, which is actually a smaller version of the Anaya map. Now, exclusive to Sony is the Shoot House Survival. The combat pack for Season 3 for plus subscribers includes the Epic Operator skin for Wyatt, the Legendary Marksman Rifle uh, Blueprint, the Epic Handgun Blueprint, a Epic Tactical Knife, Epic Weapon Charm, Animated Calling Card Spray, 
60 minute double X double weapon XP token and finally a mission based multiplayer assault rifle blueprint. So if you're playing Modern Warfare season three is out, go ahead and check out those additions to the season itself. All right, moving on to Xbox. Xbox's trailer for the week is Sun with Sea Submariner Edition. Check this out. All right, that was Sun of the Seas, Submariner Edition. That comes out on the 17th as well. And moving into Xbox's news, April's free ships of fortune for Sea of Thieves is coming April 22nd. You can now become the emissaries, which allows you to earn boosted rewards from your voyages, plus some cosmetic rewards for those who perform best. Speaking to one of the trading company representatives at the outpost, Will earn you a spot but you have to make a pretty hefty donation to prove you want in a new trading company called the reaper's bones some arena improvements and finally you can now get a feline friend to join your pirate so check that out when it releases on the 22nd of this month now gears tactics releases on april 28th and promises a brand new way to experience the franchise. You will assume the role of Gabe as he recruits, equips, and commands his squad on a mission to hunt down the leader of the Locust Army. The list of achievements has been or has arrived, I should say, on Xbox Wire for those that are interested. Check it out later this month. Now, moving into Nintendo, guess what? No game released this week which means we're going to jump straight into the news, and there's no game release for Stadia either, so we're just going to bounce into that as well. So, here we go. Nintendo. Aspire Media has finally rolled out the update to fix the crossplay issue with Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, which was allowing PC players to jump into Nintendo Switch games on the same servers. It's version 1.02 and it resolves various multiplayer issues to improve the multi or the player experience, implemented initial additional multiplayer security code, and addressed some minor bug fixes. Aspire states that it's fully committed to delivering a great gaming experience and that if any other issues pop up they should be resolved relatively quickly. So good on you Aspire. If you're playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, today is Bunny Day. There's been a special seasonal event where you gather as many eggs as possible and build bunny themed items and furniture going on for the last three weeks. Today's the final day. Zipper has returned and can help you out with certain recipes for payment of course and a special gift if you give them one of each egg. So get in today to cash in on some extra Bunny Day fun. So. That's it for Nintendo. Now moving into Stadia. Stadia's free tier is here. It launched a few days ago and now you can utilize Stadia for free. No monthly fee or device purchase. Now, barring you'll have to purchase your games, this is good news for those that wanted to try before they bought the Stadia package or for just those that would rather play games without having a system. Alongside the update, Stadia's Android app got an update 2.13, which shows signs of a touchscreen controller, but mainly a good bit of work has been done to prepare the app for Android TV. The launcher itself is officially recognized by Android TV and is downloadable. Unfortunately, at this point, it is still in build stages as the Get Started page is all you will be seeing at this time. Exciting news for the move to Android TVs, and we should definitely see this fully available sometime this year. Now, finally, for Stadia, you can use your own controllers to play Stadia. 
with the free tier launch this is a bonus if you happen to have controllers already wireless play on chromecast ultra still requires the stadia controller but on pc and mobile you can use most gaming controllers including the xbox one ps4 and xbox 360 even depending on the controller you might have to plug into via a usb cable to the device itself and it also may depend on the device being used. It seems PS4 and Xbox One are relatively simple to connect. So that's it for this week, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and by all means, we will see you next week here at Upfront Games. Have a good one.